Our topic for today came from the request of Mr. Siko. I will give you the techniques needed to paint this. I will choose this image as the reference because the details are clearer. There are three methods I used here. First is the scratching method. For this technique to work, you need a smooth surface canvas or, in this case, synthetic paper. There are only two things you will do here. First is to add a layer of paint. The second is to scratch it following the pattern on the reference. This is the easiest of the three and the most commonly used. I am also working on layers, depending on the value of the highlight. If you scratch the paint, you will see 80 to 90% white again. In some areas of the reference, the highlights are more like mid-tones. So you have to tone the scratch area by spraying a really thin layers of black. The second is the DIY stencil. I already made a video about this, so I won't be explaining the process here. You can just go to the description of this video and you'll find the link to that video. Going back here, this process can work on any surface like paper or canvas because there's no need for you to scratch the surface but just leave some tiny areas white and you can also get the same effect. Sometimes this is more practical to use especially on bigger paintings like this. Work in layers as well. Use the blending method. From really bright highlights gradually fading into shadows. So you should replicate that impression to mimic the roundness and volume of the hair. So your braided hair will not look like a flat strand of thin fibers. The third is a combination of freehand and scratching. This is the most common method you will see me using. It's not the fastest, it's not the easiest, but it's the most convenient for me. Also, in some areas of the hair, this is the most natural looking, in my opinion. But here, the strands of hair are really well separated. So this freehand is not very useful here in this case. If this was a small painting, this method would be really suitable because in a small scale painting, you will only see small clumps of hair and not the strands. So these are the three methods for this subject. Of course, if this was not a close up hair, the process would be less time consuming. For the remaining parts of the hair, I will just start using a freehand shield to get just the shape of the clumps. Then I will use all the methods combined. So I will just switch between techniques depending on what I feel is needed. Sometimes when my airbrush is not spraying finely, I will just use another method that I just showed you here. I also encourage you to experiment with and try these three methods. It doesn't matter if you just stick to one or use all of them. If you use a technique and feel it's better for you, then it's up to you. Choose what you think is best for you. It's about the outcome. The last part of this hair is these tiny strands pulled from the scalp. In this close-up image of hair we are painting, we need to depict the fine strands. But if you are just painting an A3 or even a 15 by 20 inch size portrait, these details are not needed. That is, fewer strokes and less work is needed. So the methods being used here are just the same. But this time, there are no highlighted parts. So we don't have to do any scratching. So to add volume to the hair near the braided part is to just spray layers of paint and less on the root part. Remember to keep the shape or pattern in mind as well. So this will depend on the reference you choose. I hope I gave you enough ideas about this braided hair. If anything confuses you or requires further explanation, please leave your concerns in the comment section. I encourage you, especially all the newbies. So if this was interesting for you, the next lesson is about the dreadlock pattern or texture. I can't include it here because the video will get really long. I hope you practice painting this simple pattern. Salute!